Hello, welcome to Granada Reports. Hello, we're live with the latest in the Northwest. Here's what's coming up on the programme. GMP could and should have done much more to protect them. The Greater Manchester Police Chief Constable apologises to victims of the Rochdale grooming gang ten years after the trial. Pitching in to make a home, how one community is pulling together to help a family fleeing war. One thing that's fundamental to my work is that it exists in a state of not only. Tate Liverpool's hosting the Turner Prize for the first time in 15 years. We take a look at the weird and wonderful art that's been shortlisted. Why this fine gaggle of Northern comics are getting together for a special gig over Easter. And already this week it's been warm enough to see the orange tip butterfly in Hesham, but warmer still as we head towards the long weekend and all the detail a little later on. So stay with us. First though, they were just teenage girls when they were targeted by the Rochdale grooming gang. They've been fighting for 10 years for an apology from Greater Manchester Police. And tonight they have finally heard the words they've been waiting for. The Chief Constable, Stephen Watson, told them his force had let them down. The women were repeatedly raped and sexually abused by the gang and treated as criminals by the authorities. Today they said it was a relief that they were finally being recognised as completely innocent victims who had needed protection. We can cross live now to Tim Scott, who is at the force headquarters for us tonight. Tim, the women met the chief constable earlier. Yes, they did, Lucy. And, you know, it's taken 10 years since the conviction of the Rochdale grooming gang for Greater Manchester Police to issue that apology as well as pay out substantial damages to three survivors of the gang's abuse. The three women were all girls when the abuse took place. When they reported what happened, they were either ignored or treated as criminals themselves. And those police failings, the failures to respond to the allegations, well, it meant that the gang were free to continue with their abuse over a period of years. Nine men were eventually convicted and today the three survivors who want to remain anonymous welcome that apology from GMP. They released short statements. One said, the way I was treated at the time had a terrible impact on my life for years after the abuse ended. As a victim, I should never have been treated the way I was. Another said, it's been 10 years and they'd never accepted what really Really happened. If we'd never found lawyers, I don't know if they ever would have apologised to us. Now, GMP have refused our request for an interview today, but Chief Constable Stephen Watson did release this statement earlier. Today is not about Greater Manchester Police, but about those victims who, in the past, have been let down when they needed our help in the most traumatic and horrific circumstances. I have now personally delivered my apology to some of these victims for the failings Greater Manchester Police had in its contact with those who suffered child sexual exploitation in Rochdale. It is a matter of profound personal regret that the childhoods of these victims were so cruelly impacted by the dreadful experiences they endured. GMP could and should have done much more to protect them. Now, earlier I spoke to ex-GMP detective Maggie Oliver. She'd left the force in disgust at the way it had treated the survivors, and she attended their meeting with the chief constable earlier today. We are really grateful that the new chief constable has apologised. Um, it's ten years too late, but we can't do anything about the previous chief constables and the organisation blocking this apology for so long. It's better late than never. Um, we're all hoping that this will bring in a new era where they do not repeat the failures to other victims that these girls have had to endure. This has been 10 years, a battle from start to finish. Without Harriet and Kate from the Centre for Women's Justice and my perseverance, this would never have happened. They would never have got the apology and I just hope that GMP have learnt lessons, that it's not just empty words, that we get real change. I would like to see this as an opportunity for one police force in this country to learn lessons, to lead 
as an example for all the other police forces who are failing victims and survivors throughout the whole country because this is not a historical problem. This is going on today. Can you uh, give us a sense of how the girls, what they said afterwards or how they're feeling about this? I think that they are relieved finally that they can maybe begin to draw a line under it, um, put their lives back together and begin to build a future. This whole affair has indeed left a stain on Greater Manchester Police's reputation, but as you've heard from Maggie Oliver there, today's apology does mean perhaps that the three survivors can now begin to rebuild their lives. Lucy, Andy. OK, Tim Scott in Manchester, thank you. On to more news now, and a nurse who's accused of murdering eight babies at the Countess of Chester Hospital has appeared in court ahead of her trial. Lucy Letby denies murdering eight babies and ten further accounts of attempted murder. She followed today's proceedings at Manchester Crown Court on a video link. Her trial, which is due to start on October the 4th, is expected to last up to six months. The family of a young non-league footballer who died during a car meet in Warrington say he was much loved and they'll miss him forever. Sam Harding, who was 20, was hit by an Audi S3 on Sunday night. He played for a number of clubs across the northwest and was capped for England schoolboys. A 21-year-old man has been arrested on suspicion of causing death by dangerous driving. And some shocking pictures for you next as a brave pensioner who ran after a thief who tried to steal her car was almost dragged under. Luckily, the woman was unharmed in the incident, which happened yesterday outside a post office on Booker Avenue in Liverpool. Merseyside police are appealing for witnesses to help them trace the offender. Incredible. OK, well, next tonight, the school in Fleetwood that is opening its arms to a refugee family from Ukraine. Russell School has converted a house in its grounds with help from members of the public and local tradespeople. It's all for a mum and her two boys who've escaped from Kharkiv, a city near the Russian border that is currently under heavy bombardment. They're one of the first families to arrive in the UK under the Home for Ukraine scheme, as Ka Tasha Kachiri reports. The finishing touches, preparing for a family who've already been through so much. So this is one of the rooms that we've renovated uh, for one of the boys that are going to be joining us. We've had some donations. One of the families bought a brand new mattress. We raided our boarding stores for the desk. All the clothes have been donated by local families as well. Rossall School in Fleetwood has converted one of their buildings into a home for a Ukrainian family. And here they are arriving at Manchester Airport being greeted by Jeremy, the head teacher, and his family. Yulia and her boys Oleg and Vladimir have no idea what to expect, but even as they make their way to Lancashire, last-minute work is being done to make their new house a home. The house was more or less a shell. It didn't have any furniture or anything like that. Um, so we've just pulled on family, we've just pulled on parents, we've our maintenance team, teachers, everybody's got a paintbrush in their hands and just to try and make it a place that they can really feel at home. It all started with a message from Yulia to the head teacher Jeremy. Good morning, Jeremy. My name is Yulia. I'm from Ukraine. Students have been raising money while local people have been pitching in and giving whatever they can. We've had so many local um, businesses or individuals saying, well, look, the, the, the boys will need slippers or they need dressing gowns or I've got two bikes in my shed for, for a three-year-old and an eight-year-old. Um, can I drop them off for you? And, and so everything you see around you today is really the generosity or, or reflects the generosity of, of the community. Pavlo is a student at Russell. He moved here from Ukraine five years ago and his family are still out there. I have been the translator for the family because the English is not that good. So I felt good because I can help Ukrainian people in some way, even though I'm stuck here. The school isn't just helping one family. They're also taking in six Ukrainian students fleeing war who've been given free places. At this school, people can pay up to £35,000 a year for a place. There are 30 staff who live on site, along with 350 students. This isn't just a home, it's a community that will hopefully give them some respite to what is going on in Ukraine. Yulia had to leave everything and everyone behind, including her husband, when Kharkiv was destroyed. 
but now she's hoping to give her sons a bit of stability. All we can hope is that the kindness, love and compassion which I hope she feels when, when, when she's here will, will A, provide stability for the children and hopefully restore her faith in humanity. Tashi Kachuri, ITV News, Fleetwood. Yes, yeah, so good to think of them getting a warm welcome yeah. there. Uh, well, we have lots still to come on the programme. More help for Ukrainians. Live in the studio, the comedian putting on a special gig to raise money for those caught up in the conflict. And some rare, undulating, wave-like asperitas clouds caught in the skies above the northwest yesterday evening. Often seen nearby thunderstorms. Just a grey old day today, but it is getting better. And I'll have the full forecast a little later on. You know, whatever they're called, I'm fed up with them. <laughs> Too much grey in that sky yes. today. Now, then, only last night we saw those paintings on giant billboards in Stockport. Well, tonight it is the Tate in Liverpool grabbing the limelight. Yeah, for the first time in 15 years, has it really been that long, the Turner Prize is being presented in the city and four British artists have just been shortlisted. Now, we might not always agree with each other about what's art and what's not, but Paul Crone was at the Tate to see who's in the running for the top spot. There may not have been the drama of the Champions League semi-final draw at the Tate Liverpool today, but no one should brush aside the importance of the prestigious Turner Prize and the announcement of the four shortlisted British artists. So Ingrid Pollard will go up against Veronica Ryan, Sin Wai Kin and Heather Phillipson. I'm Heather and I make stuff. One thing that's fundamental to my work is that it exists in a state of not only it's not only this, but it's also this and this and this. 2022 marks the Turner Prize's return to Liverpool for the first time in 15 years. And for the jury to pick an outright winner from four hugely talented artists won't be easy. Oh, I don't know how they're going to choose. I mean, I'm really happy that I don't have to do that. Um, I think all four artists are really spectacular and are fascinating in their own right. The Tate Liverpool was the first gallery outside London to host the prize back in 2007. Previous winners include Damien Hurst, yes, with this controversial piece, to Anthony Gormley, perhaps best known for his life-size statues on Formby Beach. The shortlisted artists for the 2022 Turner Prize haven't disappointed the judges. It reflects different practices in Britain, uh, you know, different approaches, different themes that they explore, different identities as well. Uh, and it shows here yeah, the diversity of creative practices and, uh, and practitioners in Britain. The winner will be announced later this year and all the finalists' work will be on show in Liverpool. Everybody's just really eager to be yeah, back in the galleries, back out into the world, engaging with other people, engaging with works of art and I think we're all really pleased to be doing that. With a first prize of 25 grand, I wonder whether it's too late to submit my entry. School magazine, circa 1978. Look at the artwork. Extraordinary. No, not even an A for effort. Back to the drawing board. Paul Crone, ITV News, Liverpool. Did he's he really got, do he's that? He's got some hidden talents if <laughs> he did. Good. That's very good. And some interesting <laughs> artwork there. I must admit, I've seen the one at Trafalgar Square and it is eye-catching, certainly. That's the ice cream. The ice cream I think one. I like that. Yeah, best. it's very, very good. Um, sad, though, that none of those shortlisted were actually from the North West. Yeah, what do they know? There are great artists in our part of the world, so could you do better? Well, we invited you to send in some of your own works of art, so take heart and look at your gallery. Six-year-old Max Waterhouse has sent in this very sweet drawing of a dog called Blue. Thanks for that, Max. Gorgeous. Yeah, next up, it's from a former art teacher, Claire Connolly. She says so she starts the day simply by making marks for just 10 minutes, and then by the end of the week, she has a beautiful piece of art. That's lovely and she bright. Does. I like that one very much. This is from 17-year-old Daisy Foster, who goes to Wirral Grammar School for Girls. Her proud mum, Helen, sent this in. Ah, from a portrait of a king to this of Queen singer Freddie Mercury. That is brilliant. It was sent in by decorator Lee Cooper from Chester. Well done. Nice one, Lee. And lots of you have sent in pictures of your pets. But how about this from Catherine Corbett? She's 52 and a half and sent in her work titled My Dog. Hmm. Yeah. Looks like I've drawn that one, to be honest. Yeah, it seemed to have more than four legs to that, but anyway. 
I'm not saying anything more. It's a tail, I think. I hope. I think uh, it's sport. Time for sport. sport, sport yes, think? okay. <laughs> Shock announcement at Manchester City. Mike? Yes, there was a shock announcement. This one took everybody by surprise today. It happened at a press conference to preview tomorrow's Champions League game against Atletico Madrid when City's captain, Fernandinho, revealed he was ready to leave the club at the end of the season. The news came as a shock to his manager too. The 36-year-old former Brazil international has won four Premier League titles since joining City back in 2013. Here's what he said at that press conference. Would you like to extend your stay as a player here another year, maybe? I don't think so. I will go back to Brazil for sure, yeah. And is that, has this been formally decided with the football club that you will be leaving? I, decide, I, deci I decided with my family, so it's the most important for me. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know it. <laughs> we will see what happens at the end of the season. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. So Fernandinho's... <laughs> So I said many times, so important for me, and it's coming the nice period that we'll see what happens. But anyway, I will talk to him. Well, stay with football and Crew Alexandra are looking for a new manager. They've sacked David Artel following their relegation from League One. A former player for the club, Artel had been in charge at Gresty Road for five years. His assistant manager, Alex Morris, has been made interim boss. Now, it's an important night for Wigan Athletic, who can take another huge step towards promotion. They're away at Burton Albion, knowing a win would move them six points clear at the top of League One, with just five games left to play. We've put ourselves in a position where, obviously, we're top of the league at this moment in time, and when we come to town, teams are going to want to turn up and play well. Jimmy Floyd, Hasselbank's teams are always tough to play against. So, again, you know, we're expecting a tough test, and we know we'll have to be at our best to get a result. And finally, to some good news on the health of former Manchester United manager Louis van Gaal. Last week, he revealed he was having treatment for prostate cancer. Well, now he's confirmed it's been successful. The 70-year-old says he had 25 sessions of radiation treatment before waiting six months to get the all clear. What great news. That is your sport tonight. And we wish him well. Uh, that is good news. Let's take a look now at what's coming up on the ITV News at 6.30 with Mary. Coming up on the programme, the Prime Minister, his wife and the Chancellor are all set to be fined for breaking lockdown rules at Downing Street. It's part of the police investigation into a series of illegal parties. So can Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak stay in their jobs, having broken the law? Also ahead, has Russia used chemical weapons in Ukraine? Britain and America are tonight investigating. And we will have the latest from the US as Johnny Depp and Amber Heard face each other in court once again. Well, do join me for those stories and more at 6.30. Well, back here in the Northwest, we love nothing better than a good laugh, especially in a good cause. And that's why we're very pleased to be telling you about a big stand-up gig this Easter. Yeah, what a lineup! Johnny Vegas, Jason Manford and Dave Spike and loads more as well will all be on stage at the Manchester Apollo on Easter Monday to raise money for charities supporting Ukrainians. Yeah, Justin Morehouse is hosting alongside John Thompson uh, and joins us now. So could we describe you as the Bob Geldof of this? Uh, well, actually, John has said that I'm the mid-jaw and he's the Bob Geldof of this because <laughs> he's, uh, he's got the sweary voice. Um, yeah, I mean, it's genuinely, and this is like, people always say this, don't want to talk about what we've done, because it's dead easy. We just pick the phone up, we ask a load of mates, are you free Easter Monday night? And they all said yes. So but how difficult that. is it to yeah. round up a group of comedians? Well, well you know, they call a group of comedians, a, a gaggle. That's what they call oh, them. Very good, yeah. A giggle. Uh, a gaggle. A gaggle <laughs> of comedians. It was quite easy, really. We, because the reason we did this is a, a, a guy called Alan Erasmus, one of the founders of factory has been over in uh, Ukraine, saw it, came back and reached out to a few pals, including John, who's his neighbour. John said, we've got to do something. And I said, oh, we're... And we were watching the news together and it came on. This Valenska, the president, the prime minister of Ukraine, is a former comedian. So yeah. we thought, well, got out one of our own, Absolutely. got on the phone, asked a few. Everybody said yes. They, people are flying in from all over the place to come and join us. So it's really goal. good. What can we expect? We can expect, uh, it's been a while since anybody's seen Johnny Vegas on stage, yeah. uh, so we're putting him on towards the end uh, <laughs> because he, 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 he likes to go on. We've got Jason Manford coming back off his holidays early, Dave Spikey back off his holidays, Kerry Pritchard McLean, we've got Nina Gilligan. We've it's got a lot some of rivalry when you bring, bring them all together like that. Um, 
they just steal each other's gags. No, we don't. We don't. That's the the big thing. Is we've got uh, we've got we've got some of the older comedians on from a di- different circuit. So the you know we we mix and match nowadays. Where it used to be like the never the, the two yeah, should yeah. meet. But, Have you got uh, Les Dennis? I love Les, Les Dennis. Les Dennis is coming. Yeah, we've got Mick right. Miller. Good. We've got Dave, we've got everybody. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and and like through the generations as well. You've got you've got people that you know are really just sort of you know doing well at, at the moment. People who we've known for a long time. Exactly. As well, yeah. isn't it? it's a something mess. for everybody. Yeah. That's what you're trying yeah, to say. Yeah, 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 exactly. Something for everybody. Uh, I'm so excited to be seeing Adam Rowe, who's a brand new commit. Well, been going two or three years from Liverpool. Yeah. Could be on the same stage as, as Les Dennis. When he found out Les Dennis was on it, he was <laughs> definitely I'm here. And we've got one or two little surprises as well along the way. Are you going to tell us what they are? Pardon? Tell us what they are. They wouldn't be surprises. Oh, I wouldn't be able to see you'd have to buy a ticket. It was worth a try, wasn't it's it? It's going to be a great night. It's Easter Monday night, yeah. so nothing happens on Easter Monday, no, does it? No, it all kind of fizzles yeah, out, Yeah, you've got work it? the next day, so buy yourself a ticket, come along, there'll be something for everybody. If you don't like somebody, they're only on for about seven minutes anyway, so you can... <laughs> Nip to the loo or something like <laughs> that. Heckle them. Yeah. No, don't be. I'm not allowed to heckle a charity oh, game. Oh, OK, I'm sorry. Well, I'll tell you what, what a terrible we, de- thought. we definitely need a bit of levity at the moment. So definitely. I think it's a, it's a great idea, definitely. If people are interested in going along, yeah. how can they go about getting yeah. to it? Uh, just a quick Google search. You'll find it at gigsandtours.com or via my website, just tomorrow's.com. It's called Easter Extravaganza. 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 Very good. See what just you did there. See what we've done there. Yeah. And it's at the Apollo, which is a fantastic venue. Yeah, I um, that. And we've made sure as well, because we're starting at 7.30, we've made sure that people can get home as well. So it's not going to be on at 1 o'clock in the morning. It'll be done for about 10. So I thought you were saying you're going to give them all a lift home. I'll give them all a lift home, yeah. <laughs> so no, excited about it. Looks about it looks brilliant, Justin. It's going to be a great night. And you know what? Good. What's a better way of making money for such a you know, a serious cause? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. And the foundation that we're working for, Legacy of War, they help civilian uh, victims of conflict yeah. all around the world. So that's Good what luck it's about. with it. Listen, thank, thank you, you for coming in. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, let's get the weather. Here's Kerry. He's cooked up a storm and now he's going to scrape the fat into the bin instead of the sink. My guy. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Hang on, what's that fish? Hello, very good evening to you. The promise of more in the way of sunshine and higher temperatures continues this week, but also high tree pollen counts, so it is bad news for hay fever sufferers from tomorrow onwards. For today, we had that area of cloud and rain with some fairly heavy pulses pushing its way northwards during the first part of the day. A brief respite over the last few hours, thinning cloud, mainly dry, but further showers threatening from the south as we head through this evening. One or two of those on the heavy side, but again moving north quite quickly. And then overnight tonight into the early hours, quite a lot of cloud around. Still the risk of a few showery outbreaks and quite a lot of low cloud out into the Irish Sea. That combination, despite the winds being light, leaves us with a mild start as we head into tomorrow, 6.16 and 8.08. So quite cloudy, misty and murky over the fells and the Pennines first thing tomorrow. And as we head into the afternoon, we are hoping that some of that cloud will thin and break. And where it does, the temperatures will pop up to around 17. Otherwise, though, still quite a bit of cloud around tomorrow. The wind's light and still with mild conditions and a bit of dampness, quite a lot of mist and murk right over the tops of the Pennines. Hopefully, as we head into Thursday, it will be mostly dry. So morning mist and fog, fewer showers, more in the way of sunshine, but still the risk of a little bit of low cloud out into the Irish Sea, perhaps lapping onto the Cumbrian coastline at times. But highs potentially on Thursday up to 20. 21, the magical 70 in Fahrenheit on Friday, and hopefully staying settled, warm with light winds into the long weekend. Take care, see you soon. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Bob, Bob! I'm here. Yeah, Kerry looking a lot warmer than she was the last time I saw yeah, her at the absolutely. Grand National uh, when we were both freezing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Easter's looking great. Saturday, big sunny sunshine Fingers on that. For, uh, and weekend. also, let's give you a reminder before we go, because Justin was absolutely brilliant. That is the Easter comedy egg extravaganza for Ukraine, and that's all happening at the Apollo. You can find uh, the details about that. Uh, that's the lineup there. Loads of big names, yeah, um, and got... you can find that on social media. Easter Monday it is, uh, and we really recommend you go along and support them. Yeah. Uh, also. Let's get on to tomorrow Tomorrow. night's programme because I'm really looking forward to that. We're going to open up 
the Take That songbook. I love a bit of Take That. Uh, because filming is coming to an end on a new movie based on some of their biggest hits. Yes, never forget to join us on Granada Reports. Yeah, we're back for good tomorrow. Until then, have a little patience. It's enough of that, I think. Good job the programme's coming to an end. We'll see you tomorrow at six. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. <laughs>